Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at an important theorem called the mean value theorem, and then a special case of it called Rolle's theorem. So let's read through it and then figure out what it says. The mean value theorem says, let f be continuous over the closed interval a, b, and differentiable over the open interval a to b. Then there exists at least one c in the interval a, b, such that f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Now beginning kind of with the conclusion, we know what these quantities mean. f prime of c we know is the slope of a tangent line at some c. All right, so we know c is some x value in the interval and f prime of c would be the slope of that tangent line. We've also seen this quantity before, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. That's also a slope, and that's the slope of a secant line from a to b. So the mean value theorem says if you have a function that is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, so no breaks, no jumps, no holes, on the interval a to b, and the function is also differentiable over the open interval a to b, so derivative exists everywhere except potentially at the endpoints, then there will be at least one place between the endpoints where the slope of the tangent line is the same as the slope of the secant line. We know that lines that share the same slope are parallel, so visually this would mean for functions that meet the conditions of mean value theorem, if you were to draw a secant line through the endpoints, there would be at least one parallel tangent line in that interval. So let's look at an example and see what that means. All right, let's check out this example, g of x equals one over x on the interval from one to two. We want to verify that the function satisfies the criteria of the mean value theorem and find all the values of c in the given interval that the theorem guarantees. So we have to start by verifying that the mean value theorem holds. There are two criteria that have to be met. g of x would need to be continuous on the closed interval from 1 to 2. And then we would also need to show that g of x is differentiable on the open interval from 1 to 2. If those two things are met, then we will have a c guaranteed by the theorem. So first thing, g of x being continuous on 1 to 2. Well, we know this function 1 over x pretty well. We know that it is discontinuous or has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. But we're working on the interval from 1 to 2. So the only discontinuity that this function has is not on the interval of interest. So g of x is continuous on the closed interval 1 to 2. Second part, g of x is differentiable on the interval 1 to 2. So we want to find the derivative and then make sure that it exists on this open interval. So g prime of x, if we think of this as x to the negative 1 power, would be negative 1 x to the negative 2, or negative 1 over x squared. This derivative exists everywhere except at 0, because again, 0 would make the denominator 0. So the only place our derivative does not exist is at x equals 0, therefore it does exist, or g of x is differentiable everywhere on the interval 1 to 2. So this function does satisfy the criteria for the mean value theorem. Now we can go about finding the value of c, or values potentially, that the theorem guarantees. Now remember, the theorem guarantees that since we have met the conditions, there will be some c for which the derivative value at c is equal to g of b minus g of a over b minus a. Well, we already have our g prime, so 
evaluating that at c, we get negative 1 over c squared equals, now we need g of b minus g of a. So g of b or g of 2 would be 1 half, just plugging in 2 to our original function, minus g of a or g of 1 would just be 1 over b minus a or over 2 minus 1. That gives us negative 1 over c squared equals 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half over 2 minus 1 is 1. So we have negative 1 over c squared equals negative 1 over 2. Cross multiplying there, we get negative c squared equals negative 2. And then dividing both sides by negative, c squared equals 2. Taking the square root of both sides, c is potentially plus or minus the square root of 2. Now really there we do have two values, but we're only interested in values that land in the interval from 1 to 2. So we're going to disregard that negative square root of 2 and say c equals positive square root of 2 is the c value guaranteed by the mean value theorem. All right, cool. Let's check out that second case or Rolle's theorem. So Rolle's theorem is actually just a special case of the mean value theorem, and it is concerned with if we meet the same starting conditions, if f is a continuous function over the closed interval a to b, and differentiable over the open interval a to b, and if we now meet a third condition, that is if f of a equals f of b. So if your endpoints share the same y value, then there exists at least one c in a to b, such that f prime of c equals zero. Well, let's think about why that is. We said this is just a special case of the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem guaranteed that there was an f prime of c that was equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Well, if f of b minus f of a, if f of a and f of b are equal, then f of b minus f of a would must be 0. So 0 over b minus a would be 0. That's where we get this f prime of c equals 0 bit. We can see that visually by looking at this picture here. So here we see our slope of our secant line. If our endpoints are equal, then that slope will be 0. And we can see that there will be at least one, in this picture, actually two places where the slope of our tangent line or our derivative is also equal to 0. All right, let's see this in action. So, all right, let's see this in action. So for this function f of x, x squared minus x minus 2, we want to verify that this function satisfies the criteria of Rolle's theorem and find all the values of c in the interval negative 1 to 2 that the theorem guarantees. For Rolle's theorem, we have the same first two conditions as mean value theorem, so that is f is continuous on the closed interval, negative 1 to 2. f is differentiable on the open interval, negative 1 to 2. And then the third one comes in, since we're working with Rolle's theorem, and that is that f of a is equal to f of b. So let's go through those and verify that they hold true. So f of x is a quadratic polynomial, and we know that it is continuous over the entire real line, therefore certainly continuous over negative 1 to 2. For the second one, we're going to need to know information about our derivative. So taking that derivative, we get 2x minus 1 minus 0, or just 2x minus 1. That's a linear polynomial, or just a line, so it is certainly existing everywhere on the real line. So f is differentiable on the interval negative 1 to 2. Third thing we need to check is that f of a is equal to b, or f of b. That is that f of negative 1 is equal to f of 2. 
So plugging in negative 1, that gives me 1 plus 1, or 2, minus 2, which is 0. And plugging in 2, that's 2 squared is 4 minus 2, or 2 minus 2 equals 0. So yes, in fact, f of negative 1 is equal to f of 2. So this function meets all the criteria for Rolle's theorem. That means that Rolle's theorem guarantees there is at least one place where our f prime at c, so 2c minus 1, will be equal to 0. Solving that for c, I get 2c equals 1, or c equals 1 half. There's our value on the interval negative 1 to 2, where we will have a parallel tangent line to our secant line. Alright guys, that does it for this video on mean value theorem and Rolle's theorem. We'll catch you in the next one.